Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, praise God. It is now 12 noon, and we're coming to you live on Facebook Live, amen, to get ready for our noonday worship. Y'all come on in, let's praise God together. It's Wednesday, you know what that means. If it's Wednesday, it's time for worship. If it's Wednesday, it's time for worship. God bless you, Sister Mitchell. Thank you for joining us on today. Amen. Come on in. Come on in. Tell a neighbor. Tell a friend. It's time for worship. Hello, Breelands. How are you? Oh, got your message. All is well. Amen. <laughs> God is good. Amen. Sister Johnny Mae Young. God bless you. Sister Pat Holland. God bless you. Deacon Patricia Holland the first. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today. It's time for noonday worship. Amen. That's right. My family from North Augusta, South Carolina. Thank you for joining us on today. God be praised. God be praised. God be praised. Amen. We're going to get it started like this on today. You know, this is Black History Month, so I'm going to try to take us way back uh, and see if y'all know this one. Amen. See if you know this one. If you know it, go on and sing it with me. If you don't, learn something new. Amen. <laughs> learn something new. Uh, this old song I used to hear back down south that's ringing in my mind and in my head. And it goes like this. Believe I'll run on, ye what the end's gonna be. Believe I'll run on, ye what the end's gonna be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's gonna be. The I'll run on, see what the end's gonna be. Never been to heaven, but I've been told the streets are pearls and the streets are gold. Believe I'll run on, see what the end gonna be. Be I'll run on, see what the end gonna be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end gonna be. Be I'll run on, see what the end's gonna be. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout, won't be nobody there to put me out. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. Won't be nobody there to put me out. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Believe I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Believe I'll run on. See what the end's gonna be One of these old mornings And it won't be long You look for me And I'll be gone Leave I'll run on See what the end's gonna be Leave I'll run on See what the end's gonna be Leave I'll run on See what the end's on the beat, leave our run on, see what the end's gonna be. Never been to heaven, but I've been told that the gates are pearl and the streets are gold. Leave our run on, see what the end's gonna be. Leave our run on, see what the end's gonna be. Leave our run on. See what the end's gonna be. Believe I'll run on. See what the end's gonna be. Amen. 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 That's a black history treasure right there. Believe I'll run on. See what the end's gonna be. Only the can get with that. Amen. 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 
Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come this afternoon thanking you, God, for the opportunity to come together today to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to gather just to lift up your holy and righteous name. Now, God, allow this worship experience to be transformative so that somebody's life could be changed and made you, God, because it's all about you. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We bless you and we honor you. It's in Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. If you have your Bibles, I want you to get your Bibles ready and go to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. And I'm going to read the entire pericope from which I'll be preaching today. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 11. Here's what the word of the Lord says. And I'm reading from the King James version of the Bible. Mm, yeah, King James. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give to you understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, these are the diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as, as he will. Amen. That's King James for you. Amen. Put a pen there. Put a pen there. We're going to get into the word in just a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. There are just a few announcements that I want to lift up in your hearing. We are praying. We have been praying all week long, and the spiritual prayer focus for this week is spiritual well-being, our spiritual well-being. Last week, we prayed for our bodies and our minds. Now we are praying, and I'm asking you to pray all week long in your own way. There's no particular way to do this. If you want to journal about it, if you want to go to God about it, if you want to just talk about it to God, if you want to meditate on the word and then pray however you want to do it, I'm asking everyone to pray on spiritual well-being, spiritual well-being. Well, beloved, next week this time, next Wednesday, <laughs> begins the Daniel's Fast. And we are looking forward, amen. We are looking forward to the Daniel's Fast coming. Seven days from now, Daniel's Fast will start. I'm asking you all to begin. We've already started praying and preparing for the Daniel's Fast. This is our 40-day journey, our 40-day spiritual journey together with God beginning next Wednesday. So beginning next Wednesday at 7 a.m., I'll be on what is called a daily prayer call a daily prayer call for the next 40 days. And so information can be found on this uh, page, our Facebook page, and also on our website. Uh, we want you all to prepare as we go into the season of Lent. Yes, the season of Lent is upon us. It's here. And so we now are getting in the mode of preparation. If this is your first time journeying with us through the Daniels Fast, please go to the website on Wednesday. And there you will find information 
concerning this year's Daniel's fast. Uh, we take it very seriously. It's our time of sowing seeds of denial in the body in order to reap a spiritual harvest. You got it, a spiritual harvest. <coughs> the Daniel's fast will start next Wednesday. And then every day, Monday through Saturday, I'll be praying with everyone daily. There'll be a daily prayer call. Information can be found on this page. Let's get prepared for the Daniel's fast. Also, I'm excited to announce that we're getting ready and geared up the fourth Sunday in this month, February the 28th. We're getting ready for our HBCU Sunday. Amen. Our Historically Black Colleges and Universities Sunday is coming on the fourth Sunday, and we are proud to present the Norfolk State University Choir is going to be with us virtually. And this is an effort for our scholarship ministry uh, to raise funds in order to be a blessing to students who are trying to get, make it through college and go to school. Uh, we wanna be a blessing to all of our young people and those who are going to college. Uh, we wanna make sure that they have something. Our goal this year is $20,000, $20,000. We got close to that goal last year. I wanna surpass that goal this year. Uh, there will be ways in which you can give uh, and you can earmark your fund scholarship and it will go directly there. Uh, so we're asking you all to prepare not only to enjoy Norfolk State University's choir, uh, but to also, beloved, uh, be prepared to give and to be a blessing that we might get these funds and be a blessing to other students. Also, this coming Sunday is going to be Racial Reconciliation Sunday. Uh, you'll hear more about that. Please tune in to our Sunday worship service at 8 a.m. right here on this Facebook page or on YouTube, amen, or on YouTube. Also, we're going to have our communion kit, uh, uh, passing out our communion kits on this coming Saturday, February the 13th. We're asking all of those who can between the times of 10 and 12 noon to come by and pick up your communion kit. I will be there, would love to just wave at you and see you, uh, it's touchless and you remain in your vehicles and we give you your communion kits already sealed and ready for you to have. So come on by and meet us this Saturday from 10 to 12 noon. Also quickly, I just want to announce that the church survey is out. We're asking all of those who have not already participated to participate in our church survey concerning the church covenant. You have until Monday, until Monday, February the 15th, uh, to turn in your survey. Uh, one survey per person, please. Amen. One survey per person, please. So uh, please fill out the survey and get it back to us uh, as expeditiously as possible. Amen. Uh, so we're thankful to God. Also remind everyone, Bible study is tonight. We will have Bible study tonight at 7 p.m. Please join us. We are in the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm preaching from 1 Corinthians today. We're in the book of 1 Corinthians. Also, youth Bible study will begin at 6 p.m. And crew Bible study, that's our young adult Bible study, will begin at 7 p.m. as well. Uh, check our website for how to log on to the various Bible studies and please come and, and be a part of studying the word of God. All right, this concludes the announcements for today. That's enough, amen. Uh, please govern yourselves accordingly. Well, y'all know last week, Reverend Jay just blessed us with the word and I sang, amen. So now it's her turn, amen. Now she gonna sing and I'm gonna say a little word, a little something, something. So let's give God some praise for Reverend Jay, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Good to be before you all again this week. Just a little song on my heart this morning. God is able. God is able. God is able. 
he won't fail. God is able. God is able. God is able and he won't fail. Tell me who can make a mountain move out of my way and who can make a miracle because of my faith. And when the doctor says no, who can still say yes? And when I'm in trouble, who's right there to help me pass every test? God is able. God is able. God is able and he won't fail. Tell me who can make a river out of a little stream and who can tell the clouds to roll back so that the sun can look at me and who can tell the wind to whistle through the trees and when i'm in trouble who's that same god that will come down and rescue me god is able God is able, God is able, and he won't fail, no, he won't fail, he won't fail. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give in. God won't fail. Oh, God is able. God is able. God is able and he won't fail. No, he won't. He'll never leave you. No, God won't. No, he won't forsake you. God won't fail. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Jay, for that song. He won't fail. God will never fail us. All right, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn back with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, I read for you the first 11 verses, which make up the context of the message I'll be preaching. But for the sake of time, I just want to read verses 1, 2, and 3. One, two, and three. Here begins the reading of God's word. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give, to, give you to understand, King James, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. For just a 
few minutes, I want to talk about for your information, FYI, <laughs> for your information, for your information. Let's pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for this time, this space, this privilege to come now, Lord, with your word. Ask, Lord God, that you make the word what you would have it to be. Ask, Lord God, that you would open up our hearts, our minds, our spirits, that we may be receptive to the word on today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. FYI, for your information. Beloved, a lot of information is out there in the world today. With all the technology that we have in the world, with all the internet sources and television watching that we've been doing, we're now caught up on the latest and greatest of what's going on in this life and what's going on in the world. A lot of you may have been following the impeachment, the second impeachment of Donald J. Trump. Amen. That, that may be your thing. Somebody may be following along with celebrities and their status and the things that they're doing. Somebody may be following, you know, you got people like this, all of those who done died. Amen. Uh, <laughs> somebody the other day said, did you hear about so-and-so uh, that just passed away? Amen. More information about things that are going on. But here's the thing about that, beloved. It's okay to get information. It's okay to have an awareness about what's going on. But here's the thing I want you to lock in on. It's important to be aware of some things, but we don't have to acknowledge everything. I'm going to say that again. It's okay to have some awareness of some things, but it's, you, know, you don't have to acknowledge everything. You're already on information overload. And so uh, we don't have to acknowledge every little detail of every little thing that we read or that we see. And in particular, as believers in God, we are, we are as Christians more knowledgeable about more stuff than we've ever been before. However, uh, while at the same time, uh, we're more ignorant about stuff concerning the things of God and the spirit of God. I'm going to say that again. We, we're more knowledgeable about the things of this world, but at the same time, we're more ignorant when it comes to stuff dealing with the spirit. Paul says, I do not want you ignorant brothers and sisters about spiritual gifts. In the natural, we process too much, and in the spiritual, people do not process enough. They don't know enough about the things of God. And so in spiritual terms, uh, we don't even know what we already have possession of. In spiritual terms, we don't even know what already belongs to us. See, we can't claim what we don't know is ours to have. And so, beloved, I believe this. For your information, it is more important to gravitate to the things of God, to not be ignorant as it relates to the knowledge of God and the workings of God and the things of God. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant uh, uh, because he wants them to be well-informed. In the NIV version of the Bible, it says, I don't want you uninformed. I don't want you uninformed. But, but I like how the King James puts it, I don't want you ignorant. Because the root word in the word ignorant is to ignore. He's saying, I don't want you to ignore what? The information as it relates to the spiritual things that are designed for our personal growth. I don't want you ignorant concerning those things. And so for some of us, Paul is basically saying it like this. I'm a Jonesonize it. Paul is saying for some of us that this is not new to us, but it really should be reviewed to us. <laughs> this, these things ought to be reviewed to us and not new to us, but there are some things that we have chosen to ignore. We ignore information that is vital to our spiritual growth. 
And the difference, beloved, between uh, our forebearers who were unlearned individuals, but yet still spiritual in nature, is that we have become the reverse. We become more learned of the things of the world but we become more uninformed as it relates to the things that are spiritual in God because we have more access to information and having more access to information has caused us to be on overload. But what we need to do is learn how to discard information that is not useful for our spiritual growth. So you got to learn to hear stuff and then move on from stuff if it doesn't add anything to you for your development or spiritual growth. Now, now, now let's look at the text. The text says, when you ignore or are ignorant of the things of God, then you are, NIV version, uh, uh, you are influenced or led astray by mute idols. King James Version says, dumb idols, mute images, and dumb idols. So, beloved, this is a microcosm of a larger spiritual reality, that images are the projection of a larger light in our lives. I'm going to say that again. There are some images that are projections of a larger light in our lives. And so it looks like God initially, but it doesn't give us the understanding of who God is in our lives. And in fact, it becomes a little God, these images. But for your information, these God, these small G gods were nothing more but mute idols or dumb idols, dumb images that have taken the place of God in all our lives. But I'm so glad I serve a God, hallelujah. I serve a God that is, 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 is so good that he gives me what I need when I need it. I'm so glad we serve a God who speaks to me and I can speak to him and, and, and we have a conversation, a dialogue and relationship. See, that's why we must be careful because anytime you take your eyes off the Lord and your focus is somewhere else, that in turn becomes your God and it becomes your obsession. But look, ignorance only leads to following dumb idols or mute or silent images that can give you no response. But here's the point here. We, we, how can you receive something so crucial and critical to your spiritual growth and development if you can't get a response that's needed for your development and growth? How, how can you prepare to receive something that can give you no response? Look, look, that's why in ignorance we do dumb things. Because we're following dumb idols or we're following images that are mute and silent because we've been influenced by these forces. So, so some of us may be wondering now, how in the world did I get here? Somebody may be asking themselves the question, it's just dumb that I find myself in the position that I'm in right now. Somebody might be saying, how did I let them talk me into this? Just dumb, ignorant. I know I've said it to myself, so I know you said it to yourself. Come on in here. Uh, I, 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 I'm saying to myself, I'm not the only one that has gone through this. Man, why did I do these dumb things? It's because you've allowed what has become mute image or a dumb idol to become a driving force in your life. But Paul is letting us know in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, listen, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed as it relates to those things which are spiritual. I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be ignorant about the things of God. And that's why, beloved, Paul wants us 
to right the wrong by giving us some useful information that will help with our spiritual development. Listen, this is all for your information. So, so Paul wants us to get it right and to right some wrongs with, with this information. Here it is. Whenever somebody has the spirit of God and the spirit of God begins to help operate in the midst of your cognition, the way you think cognitively, cognitively, whenever God is in uh, you in a cognitive way, uh, wherever, whenever you think about Jesus, Jesus then becomes paramount to influencing your thought patterns by way of the Holy Spirit. But see, what happens is when you get your cognition right, that's your mind, the way you think, and you put Jesus in the forefront of your life, not being ignorant to the ways of God or being ignorant to the spiritual things of God, then your cognition begins to impact your conversation. That means what I think with my mind affects what I say with my mouth. Please hear me here. What I say, think with my mind affects what I say with my mouth. So the cognition, the way I think when I put God in the forefront of my mind and I begin to take on spiritual information, taking on the things that add to my spiritual growth, it is then that the cognition that is now focused on God becomes paramount in influencing the conversation that will bring about a change in my life because you do know that you have what you say. And so, beloved, if you want to get more in tune and for your information, get the things of God. I don't want you to be ignorant as it relates to the spiritual things of God because God has given us the ability to affect by way of our mind what we say with our mouths. So cognition and conversation will change my spirit. And so when you think about the goodness of Jesus, hallelujah, and all that he's done for you, then you will speak about what your soul is feeling and what you speak out of your mouth will then be able to help to build the relationship that you have with God, which influences you to be able to confess him as Christ and Lord. I know I said a lot here, but I want you to get this. Cognition affects your conversation and your conversation will change your spiritual direction and your spiritual direction will be changed and influence a confession of Jesus Christ in your life. See, I ain't got time for celebrity drama. I ain't got time for Kim and Kanye, amen. I ain't got time for Trump, amen. He's, he's out of office, amen. I, I know they got to do what they got to do, but I ain't got time to be sitting up, flipping channels, watching all. I'm tired of filling my mind in overload with information that's not adding to my personal development and growth. And you should be tired of that too. Paul says, I don't want you ignorant of the spiritual things of God because you have been following King James Version, dumb idols. He's saying to the Corinthian church, you've been following dumb idols, but I need you to get your cognition right so that you can get your conversation right. And when you get your conversation right, you can get your confession right in Christ Jesus because I want to talk more about his lordship by way of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's more here. There's more here. Uh, for your information, when you have the Spirit of God working in you and working inside of you, he will influence not only your cognition, not only your conversation and confession will be influenced, but you have then no choice but to then act, watch it, on the knowledge that you have obtained. You, can, you have no choice when you fill your mind and change your conversation and begin to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. You are then influenced 
and you have no choice but to then act on the knowledge that you have obtained in Jesus Christ. Here's, here's where we are. See, the word acknowledge means this. The word acknowledge means to act on the knowledge that you have obtained. Acknowledgement means to act on the knowledge that you have obtained. I told you on the beginning of the message, it's okay to be aware of the things around you, but it's more important to acknowledge, to act on the knowledge that Christ Jesus has given you. See, when you have the right information, it should then lead to dynamic demonstration. When you got the right information, for your information, when you got the right information about who you are and you've changed your cognition, you, you've adjusted, <laughs> amen. Uh, uh, you, you've adjusted your conversation and now you're confessing Christ. Your confession should lead to demonstration. Watch it, it's right here, verses four through six. It says, now there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all, worketh all in all. Here it is. Here it is. Look, demonstration of what? Different gifts, different services, and different work, all done by the same spirit or by the same spirit, the same Lord through the same workers that have a diversity and difference of gifts and services all in all. See, when I have this, this is what this means. When I have the Holy Spirit in full operation in my life, he brings gifts to be manifest through all of us, different gifts through all of us. See, we all don't have the same gifts. Look, we need to know and understand that there is a variety and diversity of gifts to be displayed throughout all of the kingdom of God. But here it is, here it is, where we mess up is uh, because everybody don't act like you and because everybody don't work like you and because everybody don't do like you, we then discount those individuals because we think everybody's supposed to be like us. But the Bible is clearly sharing us, with us that there's a variety and diversity of gifts in the body of Christ in operation. So for your information, I ain't got to act like you and you ain't got to act like me, but guess what? The source of what we're doing comes through the same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that's operating in you is the same Holy Spirit that's operating in me. The same Holy Spirit that operates in me one way is the same Holy Spirit that's operating in you another way. All that matters is that there then is a manifestation and demonstration that we're all plugged in to the same source. Hallelujah. It, it might look different, but we got the same power. We, we might do different things, but we are working through the same source. And the same source that powers you is the same source that powers me. See, right now, God has designed somebody to be a beautiful candelabra, a beautiful chandelier, amen, that's in somebody's dining room right now, is operating. He, he's called you to be that kind of light. But for somebody else, you may not be a chandelier, but you may be track lighting, track lighting. Listen, listen, track lighting operates a little differently than a chandelier, looks different than a chandelier, but at the same time, the source of both power come from the same form of electricity. All I'm trying to get you to see is whether you're a chandelier or whether you're track lighting, when the flip is switched, it's the same power that powers us all. Same power that powers us all. But look, true unity in the body comes through diversity. True unity in the body can only come through diversity. 
Now think about this for a moment. I'm going to move because I, I, I got about, about a couple more minutes. Listen, think about this for a moment. If our government and our leaders in Washington, uh, uh, ha, ha, they, they got this thing backwards because they think that diversity means disunity. But the reality is when we are unified, true unity brings forth diversity that can be in operation and all of us be blessed. True unity is in embracing the diversity of gifts. I'm going to go spiritual now. That's in the body of Christ. Later for Washington. Amen. I, I'm praying for the government. I'm praying for our president. Amen. But, but you know, I ain't got time. I ain't got time to fill myself up with all that information that's not going to add to my personal growth. Listen, true unity is embracing diversity. So whether you and I have a difference of gifts, all that matters is that we are operating in unity through diversity. True unity comes through Diversity and also true unity comes through uniformity. See, everybody ain't looking alike. They're not dressing alike. That's being uniform. But uniformity means we're working for the same cause. Uniformity means that I'm lining my life up through my diversity of gifts to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and the body of Christ. So just because you look alike don't mean that we going to act alike. <laughs> uh, somebody said this, that, that all my skin folk uh, ain't my kin folk. <laughs> see, 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 someone uh, says this statement, and I believe that it's true, that we are born a designer original. That we are priceless that way. But if we're not careful, we will die being a cheap copy of somebody else. Why die as a cheap copy when God has created you to be a designer original? Psalm 139 says, David writes, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For your information, I am nobody's carbon copy. I am nobody's copy and neither are you to stop being who God says you're supposed to be. The bottom line is nobody can beat you being the best you that you can be. And I just said something there because somebody's got a gift that they're holding back on. Somebody's got a gift that God wants to use, be used in the kingdom of God. So what? They don't appreciate your gift. So what? You don't think they're going to understand. So what? Somebody thinks that you're not as good as somebody else. We're all uniquely made in the body of Christ. Just use your gift and make sure your motive is right that the kingdom of God may be blessed. Can I show you this? And I'm done. Verse seven says this. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Get this, get this. Not only will he give you inspiration that leads to demonstration, but, but, but with the right information, you can have more manifestation of the spirit of God in your life. This means that you not only receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, but you also are ready to then receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. And this helps us to discern because there are other spirits beside the Holy Spirit. So the manifestation of these gifts are important to keep us aware of the things of God but to also acknowledge the source and strength that comes from God to us. So, so, so the litmus test is to try the spirit, God help me, by the spirit, and to see if it is of God. You know if someone is of God and if they are not, because when you try the spirit, spirit knows spirit. Spirit knows spirit. Listen, not, not only that, but, but another test uh, 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 of the spiritual is through the scriptures. It's through the word of God. It must be manifest through God's word. And here's what I've learned over the years, beloved, that discerning of gifts 
and the distribution of gifts give detail of the divine. What does that mean? That when I discern the gifts of God and, and when the distribution of those gifts come upon me or whomever, I can then get the details of the divine, meaning I can get the details of what God really wants me to do. So here's the thing. This manifestation, the Bible says, is for the common good. It ain't about you, but it's for the common good. It's not just about what God is doing through you for self. It's about the common good. So for your information, these gifts are not given for your prestige or your platform or your bully pulpit in order for you to be seen of men and women. But these gifts have been given to you so that you can then impart the gifts to somebody else. You can impart the gifts to somebody else. See, see, look, why would he give you a message of wisdom only for you to be the benefactor of that message? Why would he give you a message of knowledge and, and you don't pass on that knowledge? Why would he give you the gift of healing and, and, and you don't use it through the laying on of hands? Lord have mercy. Why would he give you miraculous powers and you're not using it to be a blessing to somebody else? Why would he call you to prophesy but you don't tell nobody nothing? Why would he give you the gift of tongues but you're not sharing that gift or interpreting someone else's tongue. Look, everybody's got a gift by way of God's Holy Spirit. We've got to find the right way to use a gift. Listen, let me put a bow on this. I got to get out of here. Look, 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 look. Last thing, how do I know, Pastor Jones? You done told me that, 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 that my cognition, when I change my cognition, it changes my conversation. And when I change my conversation, it puts me online to be a co confessed Christ. When I get rid of all of the information and no longer become ignorant about the things of God, it puts me on a path that, that the, through inspiration, uh, I can then show demonstration of God's gifts. And, and, and through demonstration, then comes the manifestation for the common good to be a blessing to somebody else. See, for your information... Somebody's asking the question, how do I know the gift that I have? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. For your information, the Holy Spirit is the one, the Bible says, verse 11, who determines who gets the gifts. See, see, when I understand that he determines my gifts, then the source is not me and what I want to do, but the source is is about God using me as I am available to God. See, when you're just available, God, I don't know what you want to do through me, but I'm available. Lord, I'm open to however you want to use me. And he may use you in a way that you may not want to be used, but the power and the influence and the manifestation is right there through you. See, the only way I'm able to do what I'm doing right now is because the Holy Ghost gave the gift. The Holy Ghost revealed it to me. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, Lord have mercy, where would I be? So I want y'all to be humble when you receive your gifts. I don't want you to be jealous of anybody else's gift, but I want you to know that you got to give God glory once you discover what your gifts are. For your information, you got to tell him thank you for how you bless me. Thank you that in this season of discovery, oh God, I'm going to use my gifts for your glory. Thank you that even if I'm on the road of still discovering, thank you, God, that you've carved out a path for my life. Thank you, God, because he is able to give you the gift and he is able to use you to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Yeah. See, he didn't have to do it. But he did. Thank you, Lord. He, he didn't have to do it or use you, but he did. And somebody ought to open your mouth right now and say, thank you, Jesus, for the gift of testimony. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of prophecy. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of administration. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of exaltation. Thank you, Jesus. For the gift of manifestation of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. For the gift of wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to fill up my life with the right information. 
so that that information can give me inspiration to give divine demonstration of what God wants to have manifest in my life. And I'm so thankful to God for the discovery of the gift. I ain't got time to think it, sing it, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking it. Uh, so when we give God glory, he says, I'll, I'll give you the glory. I said I'm going to sing it. I'll give you the honor. <laughs> I'll give you the praise forever and ever. I'll give you the glory. Anybody going to give him glory? <laughs> I'll give you the honor. Thank you, Jesus. I'll give you the praise forever and ever. I'll give you the glory. Anybody there? I'll give you the honor. I'll give you the praise forever and ever. I'll give you the glory. Anybody giving him glory? I'll give you the honor. I'll give you the praise forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we're praying. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come thanking you for the FYIs, <laughs> for our information, Lord God. You want us to know that we don't need to be ignorant of the things of God. That, Lord God, you don't want us to be ignorant concerning the spiritual things that are already in possession of those who are children of God. So, Lord, help us to compartmentalize some stuff. Help us, Lord God, to get rid of some stuff. Help us, Lord, not to be on overload dealing with the information of this world, but help us, Lord God, to be well-informed. And to understand, Lord God, that we have access to gifts that you want us to use for your kingdom. And Lord, it's not about looking at somebody else and saying, I'm jealous because they got this gift. Lord, it's about looking inside of self and seeing that God has already given me a gift to be a blessing to the body of Christ. And that my motive is right, that I just want to serve you, God. We're all powered by the same source. We got a diversity and variety of gifts, but we're powered by the same source. So thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are the one who determines who gets what gift. That is not no man or no woman, Lord God, but it's all you, Jesus. So bless us now to walk by faith and not by sight, leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Listen, for your information, you got gifts. Now it's time to use it. I see y'all at Bible study. Be blessed. Amen.